good afternoon. Good afternoon to those listeners out there this afternoon. This is Pat Pearson from Diamond Girls Rock. Thank you for listening in this afternoon. We have Kenise Singleton on this afternoon with us. Mrs. Singleton is an educator. She has been teaching over the past 11 over she taught excuse me for 11 years and then she was a now she works as a math specialist forgive me good afternoon mrs singleton how are you good afternoon i'm doing well how are you i'm doing good thank you for asking welcome to the diamond girls rock show <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you. We're excited to have you and we're excited for our listeners to hear about math and what they can do in this field. So please share a little bit about yourself. Sure. As you mentioned, I've uh, worked in the field of education for a number of years. I've been in that field for about 15 years and I enjoy it. I also like watching, believe it or not, old black and white movies from the 1950s, 60s. So that's what I do my past sometimes. Okay, okay. So tell us about your interest in education. So my interest in education came about when I was in high school. Um, I always liked math a lot. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to go into teaching math. Since I like math so much, I'm going to go ahead and start teaching it. I used to help some of the classmates, my high school classmates with math. And it just said, it just felt right. You know, why not teach it? And so I've been in there for about 15 years in different capacities, different roles. And I've been loving every bit of it. Great, great, great. So you were interested in education and math in high school. So what did you do after high school? So did after you high go school. straight to college? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, no, excuse me. I actually did. I started out a year in community college, and then I transferred to the University of Eastern Michigan. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, Eastern Michigan. Shout out to you that attended Eastern Michigan University. So how long have you worked in this field? Oh, the current field being a math specialist, I've been a math specialist for about four years. Okay. So what made you leave the classroom and become a math specialist? So I definitely wanted to pursue leadership. I had um, went back to school and received a master of education in administration. So I wanted to pursue leadership role and then that opportunity became available. I was at the point of wanting to transition from my current school to another school and then the job opportunity became available for me to stay. So I stayed there. Okay, great, great. Now, what do you think your biggest accomplishment is in this area of math? I would say the biggest accomplishment would be just helping people and then seeing the fruit of that from students that may have seen me later in the public arena. Uh, just seeing how the students are doing it, just being able to help people, period. Okay, okay. So there's a myth about math and many are afraid of math or feel like they're not good in math. So tell us, what would you tell a student that's listening now that feel they cannot do geometry or algebra that's just afraid of math or maybe an adult that's attending college? Okay, so I would think the first step I would tell them is to do away with feeling as if you can't do it or it's too hard or you're afraid of it so just get rid of that negative uh, mindset and then shift it to thinking okay i'm going to try this and i'm going to practice so that i can become well at it so i think just looking for help there are a lot of videos there are a lot of books so just seeking help in different places wonderful great advice great advice Okay, so let's talk about your teaching. How was your experience in the classroom for those 11 years? So when I first began, that was, I would call that my initiation year. I actually did not know what I was doing. 
and I looked back and I would say the students were actually running the classroom. They were teaching me. Believe it or not, one of the students that I taught, I was able to apologize to him because we ended up working together later at another school. So I was able to say, I'm so sorry you didn't learn anything from me that first year. But as I began to continue to grow, um, I looked back at that first year and it let me know I needed to get things in order and I needed to be that um, teacher that had good classroom management. And so I, I changed it around and I began to love it and build relationships and enjoy the uh, process. So what did you do to have to gain good class management skills for those teachers out there who may not first year teachers? <laughs> So I looked at what I was doing, what I lacked in. So for one big thing, I actually didn't have any type of um, procedure for my students to turn in work. So I had a lot of papers just all on top of my desk. So little things, um, I had to look back and say, okay, I did this well, or I didn't do this well, so I need to fix it. So I need some clear cut procedures for the students. And then I began to just write down what do I expect from the students when they enter the classroom, from the time they sit down, when they're working, and the time they leave. So I needed to get together some clear-cut procedures. Okay, so that, great. Yeah. That will help those first-year teachers. Now, today we are in a pandemic right now. Yes. And many teachers are feeling, I wouldn't say fearful for the lack of words, apprehensive about returning back to school. How do you feel about returning back to school? So believe it or not, I'm actually not apprehensive because um, I think it's because the trust that I have with God, that's the biggest thing that, that's helping me. But I would say that don't be afraid and don't look at what the media is saying because sometimes they will hype it up. Um, make it seem worse than what it is. But I think as long as you're being cautious, taking all precautionary steps and doing your part um, to keep yourself safe, I think it'll be okay. Okay, okay. What is some precautionary steps you think one should take, parents should take mostly? Yes, I think definitely if you're a student or child is feeling sick, don't send them to school making sure that they are washing their hands, uh, wearing their masks, and being aware of why you can't maybe touch um, or play around like you would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, that things have to be a little bit different now. So just making sure that the parents would have those talks before they send their students to school. Right, because it's needed in this time. And parents also, those parents are listening, send that hand sanitizer with yes. your child yes 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 okay what do you wish you had a known today if you look back starting out i wish i had have known that it is okay to be myself <laughs> i think classroom i did not want my students to see me smile i was the mean teacher and i think that kind of um played a big part into me not building good relationships in the beginning. So mm -hmm. if I had to just be myself, it's okay to be silly, but yet have those boundaries. So just be who you are in the classroom. Wonderful, wonderful. What inspires you? <laughs> what inspires me? I guess it depends. Sometimes music inspires me. Um, just seeing maybe what people are going through that inspires me. The word of God inspires me. So it can be different things. Okay. And where do you get your daily inspiration from? If you had students and parents and our audience, our listeners today, what and what is your daily inspiration? What do you do daily? So daily is a praying. I'm um, reading the Bible and then just enjoying life. Bike riding. Yes, yes, <laughs> bike riding. Yes. But that, that is one thing I do as well bike riding, um, writing songs, exercising. So, yes. Okay, okay, exercising and bike riding. 
So what would you say to someone that may be listening right now and wish to become a teacher or a leader, wish to become a math specialist? I would say definitely look at the college that you're attending and see what classes they offer. How can you get there? So what's the road map to get to where you want to go? And then also maybe talk to people that are already in the room and stay on the positive track. So don't be people that will maybe say, you know, I don't think you're a leader or I don't think you can do this, but stay around like-minded people. Those that will push you in that direction as well. Okay, okay. And to someone who may be afraid, to someone that someone has already spoken something negative into their life, mm -hmm. what would you say to those that may be afraid that's thinking about giving up on their dream of becoming a teacher or a math specialist? So I would say don't be afraid um, that could just be a roadblock because you have to look at that's your dream, that's your goal. And I would tell them to stick with that, believe in themselves that they can do it. It might not be a hard road to be on to travel, but stay the course, stay on there and take that first step. All right. All right. There you have it, listeners. You have heard Mrs. Kenise Singleton. Ms. Singleton, once again, is an educator. She worked 11 years as a teacher and worked four years as a math specialist, which is her current role. So how can our listeners, if they have any questions or if they want to ask you about Eastern, if they want to ask you about the math field, how can our listeners contact you? Sure. Your listeners can contact me via email, and it's can, C-A-N, singleton at yahoo.com. Give it one once more so the listeners can have it again. Sure. It's can singleton, that's C-A-N-S-I-N-G-L-E-T-O-N at yahoo.com. And there you have it, Can Singleton at yahoo.com. And we thank you once again, Mrs. Singleton, for joining us. We have enjoyed your interview today. And to all those that are out there in the education world, once again, we know it's a hard time, a hard season, but we want you to relax, to take precautionary steps, as she said. And those parents that may be listening, remember to speak with your children, as Ms. Singleton said in her interview. And once again, this is your host, Pat Pearson. I thank you for joining us this afternoon and have a wonderful day.